Most successful world leaders have one thing in common. They've all read how to win friends and influence people. What's up guys, Clark from ClarkDanger.com. Super excited for this book review. Today, we have How to Win Friends and Influence People. The old classic sun-bleached edition right here that I got. Uh, it says over 15 million copies sold. I'm sure it's way more by now because this is a 97 edition. Anyway, not to bore you, let's get into the 10 best ideas on Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And before that, you know, why should we even care about winning friends and influencing people? I mean, really, this is almost a primary source, meaning that all the new books coming out on communication, all the new self-help books, they're all pulling from this guy. Some of these ideas might sound kind of duh or common sense, but we got to be sure to not skip over them because if we just write them off completely, we're going to miss their benefits. OK, so as we're going through these 10 ideas, really be open minded to each applying each one, even if it's as, as simple as uh, number one. Last thing, be sure you're listening for your best idea. Which one of these ideas stand out to you? Uh, which ones do you agree with or disagree with? and put it in the comment down below. Let's get going now on the top 10 ideas from Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Starting with idea number one. This is become genuinely interested in other people. There's a quote here that says, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. You know, simple fact, people love to talk about themselves. So if you want to win friends, influence people, if, if you want to just get to know people better or you want people to like you, become genuinely interested in them. Kind of on the same point, I was talking to my mother the other night and she said uh, she was going to some meetup, I think, online. And she said, I don't know why making friends is so hard for people. All you have to do is smile, introduce yourself and ask people about themselves or ask people to talk about themselves. And you got an instant friend. And I'm like, that's that's a really simple way to put it, but but also really true because people love to talk about themselves. They do. And if you get someone going on one or two things that they're really passionate about, boom, there's your conversation. They'll open up to you. And over time, they're going to like you because they feel like they're themselves around you. So principle number one, how do you win friends and influence people become genuinely interested in other people? get them to talk about themselves. Big idea number two, let the other person feel that the idea is his or hers. Great advice if you're in a group setting or a leadership role. Allow other people to take credit for you. What was the quote? It was, it's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit for it. We want credit for everything, but if we step, that's all our ego. So if we step away from that and let other people take the credit, make it feel like their ideas is his or hers, they're gonna feel like around you, they come up with all these ideas, I wanna hang out with you more. When I was first starting podcasting, I got some great advice, and um, it, it was from someone who had been podcasting for a long time. And they said, Clark, the secret to doing an interview show where you're the host is make the guest sound good. It's your only job. Make the guest sound good and you will have an awesome show. They'll want to come back on your show. They'll want to contribute to your show. They'll want to promote your show because they feel like they did a good job. And so for three years now, my goal with the podcast has been to make the guests sound good. Let their let whatever idea we're talking about make it sound like it's there. So if we're talking about a health point, you know, I'll softball them a question on, oh, so you're saying gluten can disrupt the GI tract. Do you have any interesting, or that's a, re that's a really good study you just brought up, you know, kind of be the hype man behind it. So there's multiple ways you can apply this. Let the other person think the idea is theirs. Um, give, give them the credit is, I think, what Dale Carnegie is trying to say on this point. And um, definitely a good way to get people to like you. Point number three, this is talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. This is a phenomenal one. Again, on the podcast, I got some more advice that said, if you want someone in an interview, it's kind of an awkward format with an interview show. You've never met that person. You're talking to them through a camera on the other side of the globe about a subject. And this is your first interaction and you're just supposed to hit it off. Some advice I got on how do you get the other person to be themselves over Skype when you've never met before 
is to share something vulnerable about yourself. And in doing that, they're more likely to open up to you. And so, okay, apply that same logic to if you're talking to someone. Maybe you're in a leadership role. Maybe you're working with kids. Maybe you're working with other people. Maybe you're in a relationship. Before you criticize or give constructive feedback to the other person, share something about yourself that's kind of revealing or maybe a time that you messed up and they're more likely to not get on the defensive and take it the wrong way. You know, so I, I mean, I can remember as a kid, I had a youth instructor do this when they were about to, I would act up quite a bit and they would need to talk to me, need to discipline me. Well, every time they came at it from, you shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z, you know, I'd, I'd respond back with all the reasons why I should be doing X, Y, and Z. But every time they said, hey, you know, when I was a kid, I did something similar. And uh, I get it, but it's not okay. And here's why. I'd be like, oh, this person understands me. Okay, now I'll listen to it. This point's kind of hitting on how do you give constructive feedback without being an asshole or a jerk? You know, how do you let people know that you need them to do things differently? without them blowing up and getting defensive. And a good tip on that is instead of using the word but, use and, Swip it, switch it out. So, you, you know, you can say, hey, an example I saw online was, uh, we're really proud of you, Justin, for getting better grades this quarter, but if you work harder in your math class, you would have done better. Versus, uh, we're really proud of you, Justin, for getting better grades this quarter. And if you continue to work hard next quarter, your math grade could be as high as the others. See how that's a little different wording, but it makes all the difference. It's uh, every time we hear but, we're like, oh, okay, nothing before the, what is that saying? No, nothing before the but matters. Point number four, dramatize your ideas. If you're going to do any sort of public speaking, if you're going to do any sort of presentation, any sort of communication where you're the focus, Find a way to implant your ideas into people's heads. Break the script. Get out of the standard narrative. Best example I know is Jamie Oliver's TED Talk on sugar and obesity in America. Okay, there's sugar in everything. I know the ins and outs of those ingredients. It's in everything. It Where he's talking about the sugar intake and how much kids consume in a year and how it's terrible. And everyone's sitting there nodding their heads like, okay, yeah, we get it. Sugar's bad. It's in soda, pizza. Like, yeah, we get it. And then what does he do? He's like, all right, people have heard this multiple times. So he gets a wheelbarrow and pulls it in with him. And it's full of the average uh, consumption of sugar a year that every student eats. And I've took the liberty of putting in just the five years of elementary school sugar. And he dumps it out on stage and says, this is the amount of sugar you're eating in a year. I mean, which one gets your attention more? A graph on a chart? or a wheelbarrow dumped out full of sugar. Boom, I mean, that stuck with me, and that stuck with people. So there's clever ways you can dramatize your ideas, and people will uh, respond to it better. Another example of this, I remember when I was growing up, there was that smoking commercial, or the anti-smoking commercial, where the lady had the, the hole in her throat, and she was like, I tried to, they'd say nicotine's not addictive, and then she smokes through the hole and says, how can they say that? I mean, that stuck with me for, I don't know, 14 years now. And um, it, it's another way you can dramatize ideas. So this is something that's pretty common knowledge with advertising. But if you want to get your point across, think of creative, clever ways you can use anchors or visual aids or whatever to really hit the audience in the face. All right, point number five, talk in terms of the other person's interests. WIFM. What does WIFM stand for? What's in it for me? This is what every single person is asking themselves when they're watching one of these videos, when they're going to look at your Facebook feed, when they're going, choosing what classes to take. What's in it for me? What's the incentive I'm getting out of this? So you, as the communicator or the salesperson, if you know that inherently every single time before we do anything, we ask what's in it for me, you can frame things with that question and almost answer it for them. That's why if you notice in these videos, at the very first five seconds, I get that attention grabber and basically say, hey, look, all the best leaders have read how to win friends and influence people, implying that if you watch this video, you'll know a little bit what the best leaders in the world know. 
because of this book, you know? And then I tell you, you're gonna get 10 big ideas from this. And it's all about framing it for what's in it for you with this video. And, um, you know, there is something to be said here. The counterpoint is what about selfless giving and not everything selfish or self-interested. That's beyond the point. Talking in terms of the other person's interests is a good way to frame something if you want to have influence over people. Number six, get the other person saying yes, yes immediately. This is based on the psychological principle that people are more likely to agree uh, to your your request if they've agreed to something smaller before that. So you basically give them a softball before you pitch them the fastball. Um, start small and then ask for something bigger. You know, I don't know off the top of my head the source of the study. I remember reading it in one of these books, though. It was talking about getting students to volunteer for an animal shelter. And they asked uh, students, you know, with a clipboard outside of like a Trader Joe's or something, and they said, hey, would you be willing to come in two hours this Saturday and volunteer at our animal shelter? And like 18% of the students were like, no, or, or said yes. But when they asked, hey, would you be willing to sign a petition for animal rights? Before they said, would you be willing to go into the animal shelter? The people who signed the petition, I mean, the number doubled for the amount of people who would come in to volunteer at the animal shelter. In other words, they signed the petition so they're, in their minds, they're like, I'm someone who loves animals. Then that next question of, do you want to come into the animal shelter? Well, they agreed to that little thing. Now they identify as someone who loves animals. So of course they want to come in and help the animals on Saturday. So if you can get the other person saying yes, yes, immediately, um, kind of saying yes in their mind to whatever you're asking, it's a good way you can get a desired outcome. This is, of course, why so many blogs, if you go to my blog, you'll see an email opt-in box. Now the point of this, this is sales 101, okay? Uh, online marketing, get people's emails and they've said yes, they've opted into that. Now you can develop a relationship with them and provide value, value, value. And since they opt into something, they're more likely statistically to buy one of your products in the future. That's email marketing right there. Building a list, they call it, and selling them things through relationships and uh, quality added value. And what's amazing is that the people who buy a product from you are way more likely to buy another product from you than total strangers, right? That's the, that's the whole point. It's called like the sales funnel, getting people and narrowing them down to this fine group who just buy anything you do. Next point, give honest and sincere appreciation. Who does not love appreciation that's honest and sincere? I mean, if you want to make people like you, I think that's one of the best fundamental ways to do so. Um, you know, in the other videos, I've talked about giving one awesome, random, sincere compliment a day. And that if you did that, you would see relationships change. You know, and of course, it has to be genuine. That's why it's honest and sincere. Um, I think in the book, it talks about the difference that this is not flattery. Because flattery is of the tongue and appreciation is from the heart. And so that, you know, anyone can say things that kind of sound nice and we kind of brush it off. Um, but if you actually give them a, a meaningful compliment, then that's something that's going to stick with people. So remember, don't just say thank you, say thank you for and give them the meaning behind what you're thankful to them on. And this is a great way to get people to like you. Honest and sincere. One last thing on this doesn't mean big and massive. Right? You don't have to come up with some elaborate, huge appreciation or compliment to give that person. Less is probably more here, as long as it's sincere. Um, I wrote down the example, you know, if you're someone who works in a nine to five office, could be like, hey, John, really solid job speaking, man. I can tell you put a lot of practice into that. It, it showed. That's honest. That's sincere. Or I really love how authentic you were when you were speaking to others. Or, you know, the room lit up when he did that joke about the museum. Whatever it is, honest and sincere is the key here. Number eight, give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. Basically saying that if we have a reputation or an identity, we conform to it. We conform to whatever identity we uh, believe in ourselves. And so if you want to motivate people, maybe you're a leader. Um, one of the best ways I've applied this has been working with kids at a boys and girls club, right? So if I pull a kid out and I'm disciplining him, and or or you know I'm trying to motivate them 
it's so easy to call attention to what they did wrong, right? And you just go into this default frame of you did X, Y, and Z. These are the consequences. Don't do that again or you'll have more consequences. That's, that's kind of how our parents disciplined us growing up. I'm sure a lot of us or people who raised us, that's how your teachers responded to you. But there's a better way, and that is to give people a reputation to live up to. So instead of saying, here's what you did, here's the consequence, don't do it again, or you get a bigger consequence, say, hey, uh, Dustin, man, you know, you did X, Y, and Z, but honestly, man, that's not like you. The kids here at the club, they view you as a leader, and this isn't leadership potential right here. This isn't what leaders do. And if you're a leader, so I expect better from you. And just doing that, you can see the changes in kids' behavior over the course of a couple weeks, a couple months, and it's almost like they get that in their head that I'm a leader and they start acting like that. Um, so that's a good way to give someone a reputation to live up to. You know, whoever you're trying to work with, maybe you're a teacher, if you got kids, give them a fine reputation to live up to. All right, the next one. This is a sub point on that. It is the power of identity. And that, look, the two most, and that the two most important, um, two most important words in our English language when we're talking about ourselves is I am. The power of I am. Um, this goes for positive and this goes for negative. So if you really want to change the way you think about things, we got to identify what we identify with. It's very meta. But for example, you know, a negative version of I am would be I am too young. I am too old. I am too skinny. I am too fat. I am a man. I am a woman. I am a depressed person. I am too broke. I am not educated enough. I am, you know, not in the right location. How do those sound? Those sound pretty negative. Those sound kind of daunting. Those sound kind of, all right, these, these again. But what if we, what if we flipped that and did a positive frame on it? You know, I am able to accomplish anything I put my mind to. I am someone who overflows with positivity to others. I am not the kind of person who chews tobacco. That was a big one for me. Um, I am someone who provides massive value and deserves to be compensated fairly. I am someone who gives their all in a relationship at all times. Identifying with those, you're going to have a totally different life. So just becoming conscious, I guess, is the point of this, of what we identify with. And I'll give you a tool at the end of how you can become conscious of that, really. But just being really aware of our, I guess they would be called limiting beliefs, is uh, the next point. The last point, uh, say my name. This is remember that a person's name is the sweetest sound. We've been over this in dozens of videos. You know this is one of my favorite points, but I wanted to close this one out with it. This is the original source I got that piece from that people love hearing their name. And if you say someone's name, I give the example of a sauna, right, at LA Fitness that I go to. If I say, hey man, how you doing? We have a conversation, it's fine. But I've noticed, just anecdotal evidence, when I call them by their name and remember it, take the time to remember it, and say, hey John, how you doing? Our conversation for those little 10, 15 minutes in the sauna is completely different. It's more personal, it's more real, um, it's just overall better, and this goes for anyone else, too. Even people you hang around a lot, even people you know a lot, just say their name more. I was talking to my friend Jim Quick, who's super, uh, super connected, networks like no other. Well, basically found himself at a dinner with Bill Clinton and a bunch of other celebrities. And he said that one of the most, you know, powerful things about Bill Clinton is that when he shakes your hand and looks at you, you feel like you have his whole presence and that he remembered his name, and he remembered three things about him that they talked about the last conversation, and that part of his charismatic, uh, you know, say what you will about Bill Clinton, but part of his energy that he just exudes on people, which so many people talk about, you know, just a charismatic guy, comes from his power to remember people's name, and to be present right there with them. And one of the ways you show people you're present is to give them your attention, repeat their name. So experimenting with that, with names, highly recommended. If you take away one thing from this video, try that. Try experimenting saying people's name more. Woo! All right, that's it. How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. Uh, full blog post in the description as well as where you can pick up this book. Be sure you like and leave a comment down below on what was your favorite point, what's your favorite communication tactic, tool, method, 
and we can all learn on how to win friends and influence people. Last thing, 11 Questions Change Your Life is a free ebook I put out. If you wanna answer that, get more clarity on uh, just where you're going, what direction, these are the best 11 questions. Thousands of people have done this by now and it gets great feedback every single time. All right, next week we are doing, let me grab it, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Really excited to bring this one out to finance book. Um, excited to go over some of these best ideas with you. Number one personal finance book of all time. I'll see you then. Until then, stop settling, start living. See you later.